Hey guys, in this video we're going to be talking about defensive techniques and gaps. If you've always heard of a zero, a four eye, a six, a wide nine technique, but you don't quite understand it, I'm going to help you out with this video real quick. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so I've got this diagram pulled up for you and throughout this video I'll be able to give you some picture examples of defense lineman techniques to go along with this diagram. So First things first, you can see I've got the offensive line kind of spread out. That way you're going to be able to tell the difference. We got a center, right guard, right tackle, and a tight end to the right. Then anything to the left is left guard, left tackle, and then the tight end to the left. First off, let's talk about gaps. When we're talking about gap integrity for the defensive line or for the offense, and you're talking about an A-gap run, a B-gap run, or a C-gap, this is exactly what they're talking about. So anything between the centers and the guard, that is from the center and the right guard and the center and the left guard, we're talking about A gap. So a defense alignment might be responsible for the A gap or in like a run scheme called trap, you're trying to get a run straight up the A gap. B gap is from the right guard to the right tackle. It's in between guards and tackles. So right guard, right tackle, left guard, left tackle. So that B gap is it, it can be to the right or to the left, but it's in between the right guard and the right tackle. More or less B gaps, we're talking about ISO, ISO runs, belly, things like that. When we're talking about C gap, we're talking about in between the right tackle and the tight end, okay? So from right tackle to tight end or left tackle to tight end, that is C gap. We're talking about counter, we're talking about power. When we're talking about C gap runs, or defensive line techniques trying to fill those gaps. And then anything D gap is outside of the tight end. Uh, outside the tight end, we're talking about D gap defender, D gap outside. So any sort of like buck sweep or anything outside sweep, outside zone, you're more nine times out of 10 trying to press the D gap. So that is all about gaps right there. So to just give you a picture example, right in between the center and the guards this is a gap right there in between the guards and the tackles we're now talking about b gap and then you've got to go to the there this is a double tight end set over here to the left but in between the tackle and the tight end now we're talking c gap and then over here outside that first tight end that is anything d gap right there you've got c gap to the right because there is no tight end attached Okay, so now going to the defensive line techniques, but real quick guys, if you're enjoying this video, if you're getting something out of it, hit that subscribe button, join the team, join the fam. We're gonna have tons of Football 101 videos, and of course, we're always breaking down film, so it's a great opportunity to learn more about the game. So now, zero technique right there in the middle, that is always head up on the center. If you hear they have a zero technique, it is lined up head up on the zero. If you have one techniques, we're now talking just outside of the center. Sometimes people refer to this as zero shade, but of course they are one technique. So anything just inside or just outside of the center, the way you want to look at it, that is a one technique. So let's go about it this way. All even numbers are head up. So let's think of zero as an even number. And then two would be head up on the guard. So a two technique is a defender head up on the right guard or the left guard. A four technique is head up on the right tackle or the left tackle. And then a six technique is head up on the tight ends, whether that be to the right or to the left. All even numbers are head up. That is the easiest way to think about this. Odd numbers, we're now talking about not being head up on defender. So if you see the one techniques are not head up, they're outside shade or inside shade, whichever way you want to look at it. Now the three technique. Three technique is always going to be, you kind of think of it more as, as an outside shade of the guards, but if you want to make it easier on yourself, anything in between the guards and the tackle. So we have a three technique in between right guard and right tackle, and then the three technique in between left guard and left tackle. Okay. So then we have five techniques. These are gonna be outside the tackles. Okay, so anything outside the right tackle is a five technique right there outside. Then outside the left tackle is a five technique as well. This is where it gets a little tricky and a little stupid, but people's done this for a long time. I personally don't do it. I'll let you know what I do later. 
So, of course, you have the nine techniques out of the tight ends. That is not the quirky part, you know. Odd numbers outside, so nine and nine. What's weird is having the seven techniques now on the inside. So you go from zero, one, two, three, four, five, seven, and then back to six, back to nine. That is weird, but that's how they've done it for a long time. Seven techniques are technically technically inside shade of the tight ends. But this is how I would refer it to, me personally. I go with six eyes. So what is an eye? Anything inside shade, this is where people start to say a four eye technique or a two eye technique. So you have a two technique, which is head up on your guards. A two eye would be slightly inside shade. So not quite a one technique, but slightly inside inside shade of that guard. They would call that a two eye. A four technique is head up on the tackles. If you have a four eye, he is slightly inside shade. I know you might think that what's the difference, but in football terms, it matters immensely. Is he head up? Is he inside shade or is he outside shade? That can change all the different techniques of a blocking scheme, encounter, power, everything, zone, it doesn't matter. You need to know if he's head up, inside shade or outside shade. So the eye technique gives you that indication that it is an inside technique. So when you go back to the quirkiness of a seven technique being inside a tight end, I would just nine times out of 10 call that a six eye just to not overcomplicate my players at the high school level. So I would have six technique head up on the tight end, six eye inside shade of the tight end. And then anything outside of the tight end is what we call a nine technique, or you would hear a lot of NFL analysis call a wide nine technique. Now let's go ahead and show you some examples. Okay, so in this clip, we're looking at it from the defensive perspective. Let's talk, let's start with the center over to the right. So This first defensive tackle is more of an inside shade of that guard. We would call that a two-eye technique, or you might could get away with calling it a one, but he is not head up, okay? So then you have that tackle, which it would be the left tackle in this situation, and you have a guy on the outside and on the inside of Debo Samuel right there. That is what we would call a five technique. He's just outside of the tackle. Now let's work back across in between, so we have a left guard. No one's head up on the left guard, but we have a guy outside of him. That would be a three technique. And then right here on our first tight end, he's not quite head up. He's a little bit inside shade. This is where I would call it a six eye, but traditionally that is called a seven technique right there. And then the far outside backer, outside shade of the extra tight end in this situation. That is what you would call your wide nine technique. Okay, so a couple more examples. Let's start from left to right. You have that tight end, another inside shade, be six eye or a seven technique. You've got that tackle right there and there's a guy inside of that tackle. This is where you would call it a four eye technique or you could call it a three if you find himself to be more inside that gap. I would probably say he's inside shade of this tight end so or tackle, so he's a four-eye technique. Nothing in between the guard and the center, but then we go on the opposite, and we have a center and the left guard. This guy might be head up on the guard from this angle. You could call it a two technique, or if you feel like he's inside shade, you could call that a two-eye. Then we've got the left tackle. He is outside of the left tackle. We call that a five technique. Okay, so in our last example, this is the 49ers defense. So we're seeing it from the offensive perspective from the Chiefs. The 49ers run what we call an odd front defense. We'll get into odd fronts and even fronts in another video. But we have a guy head up on the center. That is always a zero technique. Zero technique. Now, there's no one over the guards. But then we have two defensive ends head up on the right tackle and the left tackle. Technically, the left tackle is inside shade. We'll get to him. That right tackle, he is head up. That is a four technique through and through. On the left side, he's more of an inside shade. You could call that a four eye. Or if you find him, if you think he's more in between the guard and the tackle, call it a three technique. But to me, looks like he's more inside shade. We probably call that a four eye. Then we have a tight end. No one's head up on the tight end. We have that extra tight end. The Chiefs do a whole lot of 
overload unbalanced sets. They have that second tight end. Then you got Bosa over there lined up on him. We would call that a wide nine technique. So there you go, guys. Those are defensive line techniques and the gap responsibilities in between each gap. So if this video helps you out, great. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe. We're going to be doing more Football 101 videos, especially leading up into the 2024-2025 season. Uh, I'm a high school football coach, so I absolutely love football. And this is anything and everything football on this channel. So if you like it, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you. We're going to be doing more Football 101 videos. As always, stay humble, stay kind. Peace.